So as we prepare for the 40 series launch, probably happening on the 20th of September, since Nvidia is now dropping all these teasers and such, uh, we're gonna talk about the, pro the, the concept of binning. I think a lot of people are, Either, whether you're buying 40 series or you're buying AMD or you're buying 30 series used or whatever, this all is gonna to apply to you. So you can understand why the different product categories exist, why the different product within the same tier exist. So you can understand maybe where you can or can't spend your money and waste it. So let's go ahead and just talk about binning today. Hey, Day. Day. Mm. Dang. What? We got work to do. Yeah, I'm playing World of Warships. Yeah. World of Warships is the free to play naval strategy game where you command the most iconic and famous warships from World War I and World War II, recreated with stunning detail and accuracy. Build your fleet while participating in various game types while upgrading your ship's arsenal along the way. New players who sign up using my link below will receive an exclusive starter pack to get you up and running quickly by receiving seven days premium time, one million credits, 300 doubloons, and the tier five premium ship, the Exeter. So what are you guys waiting for? Start sinking ships with World of Warships by heading to the description below and getting your freebies. All right, so binning has existed as long as electronics have existed. But the idea of binning, let's, we have to give you a visual that sort of makes sense here. And it's funny because the name binning comes exactly from what it sounds like. You have various bins set up and where a product's quality lands, whether it be a CPU, RAM, mem uh, GPUs, or any type of electronic or ASIC or SOC period, are gonna land in those bins based on their quality. So let's start with the quality aspect of it because there is an artificial aspect too that we'll talk about here. We'll talk about GPUs and CPUs today specifically because of the fact that new CPUs are on the horizon, new GPUs are coming too. And this is gonna apply to any family, not just 40 series, but 40 series is where people start looking at and thinking about this again. Whenever there's a new family of uh, GPU or CPU that launches, gets people thinking, why do all these different tiers exist? When you have your, your silicon wafer, it's a giant, it's literally a wafer, and then they, cut those up into different sizes depending on where they're expected to, to be, whether it's slated, hey, this wafer is gonna be creating 4090s now. You have different imperfections that exist in the process. No wafer is perfect, there are imperfections. So they're able to identify those imperfections, cut them out and remove them, then you kind of get what's left over. But sometimes even after a, a perfect section of the silicon exists and you cut it down, you still might find very microscopic imperfections that affect various transistors that don't, maybe aren't firing properly or, or activating properly. Um, in CPUs, you might have particular cores that are not acting right or not meeting a certain power expectation or a particular clock expectation. So you have to disable those and kind of remove them. So if you have something that was expected to be a top tier product, not meet that standard, you start looking at what standards they do fit. So it may not fit in the top tier bin, but it might fit in a next tier down bin or two tiers down because each one of these bins have a quality expectation assigned to each one of them. So if you have a CPU that's, cause you'll notice there are from the same brands, whether it be Intel or AMD, you might have an eight core 16 thread CPU that exists in two different numbers, right? So let's say you might have like a 3800X and a 3800 non-X, both are eight core 16 thread. The only difference here is potentially between them is gonna be clock speed and all core clock speed. And that could be for various reasons. It could be because uh, maybe the lower tier product was not consistently meeting the, the expectation of the higher clock speed, or maybe it was taking more power than expected to achieve that, or it just was unstable because of, of imperfections that can exist. So the way they make it stable and turn it into a product rather than, than negative yield or waste is they slow it down or they put it into a different bin. They might even disable cores on it entirely and turn it into a six core 12 thread product, which would perfectly meet those standards. Which means if you were to like x-ray the product, you might actually see there's cores on there that are dead. And by dead, I mean disabled, turned off, not doing anything. This is something actually that existed for a long time back with FX and Athlon, because one of the other sides of binning is artificial binning, where let's say hypothetically, the yields are too good. It's, this has happened, it's absolutely happened. And, and this, was a, this was actually a great time in CPUs. It was fun to go in and <laughs> into your BIOS because some motherboards would enable this and activate cores that were turned off. You just took the inherent instability and or problems that may come with that. But if yields are too good, you don't have enough lower tier product and you have to have a full product range. So as a, as a manufacturer, you're gonna go, okay, we've got far too many of our top tier product. We have to go mainstream and we have to fill in that product stack. 
So they'll take from that bin, artificially disable and make changes to those cores. Theoretically cores would be transistors for GPUs or actual cores for CPUs. And then they'll place them in lower bins. Then back in the day, like I said, you could get like an Athlon X3, which is a three core, three thread processor. And that's an odd number to create. So you know it's a four core. And I did this once with my daughter's PC. When my, my oldest daughter had her first computer, it was actually an X3. And I went in and I found hey, the BIOS is actually giving me core control, and look, I was able to reactivate this core. The problem was I was starting to get random blue screens and stuff, and that's because that core quality, in my instance, was a legit bin where it wasn't meeting the standard out of, the, out of box settings and BIOS settings. Um, and I didn't bother tweaking it and messing with it. But, but had it been one of those CPUs that quite a few of them existed in this area where they were artificially turning them off to make a lower bin where there was nothing wrong with them at all, a lot of people got a, a, single, a whole core upgrade for free. The same thing happens in GPUs. Although with GPUs, there's very different core die sizes. So you're gonna have like, let's say in Ampere, you have like GA102, you have 104, you have 106, where the number, the bigger the number, actually the smaller the die was to create your other product stacks. They're still cut from the same silicon. It's the exact same architecture, whether it be you know five nanometer, six nanometer, eight nanometer, whatever. It's the same overall product that's chopped down. So you could have right now in your system, let's say theoretically a 3060 that initially tried to be a 3070 or 3080, but didn't meet the cut. So it literally got cut into a lower product. And this is how manufacturers will create less waste. This is how they'll create a better yield. Yield means if we have 100% bomb or bill of materials, we have 100% of this product, how much of it is going to be either defective or waste? And you find ways to turn that waste into less waste and more product, that way you are not just destroying raw materials. Now let's talk about when you have different products that exist in the same bin. So for instance, on the table here, I have a, an Asus 10 gigabyte RTX 3080 uh, Tough Gaming, which is a lower tier than the ROG Strix 10G 3080. So these are both 3080s, they're both 10 gig. They're exactly the same in terms of the core design, the amount of RAM, the speed of that RAM, However, they're very different products and, and their cost is different as well. Well, within those bins, you have overhead and you have additional um, capability of that silicon, which may exceed, like I said, the requirements for that bin, because you have to have that bin exist. So these could have potentially been 3080 TIs or 3090s, although that's technically a different core. They, they can't make the core bigger if they do really well. So you create different tiers of product within the same bin. So if theoretically, if all the binning is done as expected from ASUS, and they have to do this because otherwise you, I take that back. I've seen instances where some cards are not performing as you would expect and lower cards are performing better, whatever, sidebar. A Strix card theoretically will clock higher, have a better ASIC quality than a Tough Gaming. And a Tough Gaming theoretically would be better than their basic card. Now I forget what they call their basic card. What that allows them to do is turn the clock speeds up from the factory adjust the voltage wherever necessary, still within NVIDIA perimeters though. NVIDIA is very locked down on what the manufacturers are able to do in terms of customizing any of the power delivery or customizing any of the voltage limits and all that sort of stuff. Cause it, you know why it is? It has to do with NVIDIA's own warranty with the dies. So if they allow manufacturers and sidebar again to go and start cranking voltage on, on these things to create these super fast products and they're dying within six months, well then NVIDIA is the one having to actually warranty that card, not the AIB because NVIDIA's core has its own warranty. So it's about warranty control as well. Another video coming about that, don't worry. So when it comes to these particular products right here, you're gonna pay more for the Strix card, although it may only boost 30 megahertz higher, maybe. Now here's a fun fact. Every single card I have ever had from any manufacturer ever in the history of reviewing graphics cards will overclock 30 megahertz. You can go into MSI Afterburner, add 30 megahertz to it, or two bin, two, two bin boost bins, because boost binning is the same thing, software-wise, you could add two boost bins, which was 13 megahertz for the longest time with NVIDIA, and you could get the, that core speed, no problem. In fact, you could probably get 100 megahertz in most cards. So you have these products that exist independently within each bin to create um, these, these higher products. So for instance, like this is a 1080 Ti Kingpin card right here. A card like this is like the most expensive product stack that like EVGA ever sold. So among like the EVJ hierarchy of cards, Kingpin was always the highest. However, these were custom cards with custom power delivery design, um, voltage control that was technically outside of the NVIDIA control, but that was something that had to be activated and you had to like actually acknowledge you were voiding warranty and all that sort of stuff to get it to activate. However, the Kingpin cores themselves were the highest bin. So they, instead of having your 1080 Ti and that was it, maybe not turned into a, 
a Titan, which technically could have been turned into a Titan Pascal, they created a new category that was even higher and had more overclocking potential and such. So theoretically, these were the highest binned GPUs, which is what Strix is supposed to be and what, you know, tough and all that. Where they land in their pricing is theoretically where the actual bin hierarchy is as well. I say theoretically because like I said, they still have to create Strix cards. They can't have all toughs because, you know, they, they're gonna have to create their product stack. Otherwise, you're gonna be selling one graphics card. Have you ever actually looked at how many SKUs most of these, these brands have when it comes to graphics? Like each brand has at least five or six different tiers of card. You also can't have all Strix and no lesser, more expensive, or lesser affordable cards. So it, it's, it's not just the cooler design. It's not just the power delivery design or is it three slot? Is it longer? Is it taller? Is it extra power cables and stuff? Because here's the funny thing. Even the cards that have 42 power cables are still having to stay within the NVIDIA power spec design. And so they're not actually doing anything other than potentially delivering extra clean power. So it's a way to easily waste money by, by buying expense. One of the biggest wastes of money you could personally buy right now is a 3060 Strix. Because the extra money of the Strix name would easily pay for a 3060 Ti. Maybe even a 3070 Basic. I would take a 3070 Basic card over a 3060 Strix any day of the week. But that's how binning works. And the same thing with CPUs. Like I said, each, each CPU exists because of the fact that the quality of the silicon landed in the expectations of those bins. This is the same reason why I'll get messages from people saying, hey, I followed your guide, but as soon as I add any clock speed or frequency to my graphics card or my CPU whatsoever, it crashes. Well, there's, is, there's two sides to, to overclocking and a whole nother discussion, and that's not just voltage, or not just frequency, but voltage. So sometimes you have to add a little more voltage, sometimes under volt even, because core. Temperature is another aspect of that. ASIC quality is gonna affect not just the voltage leak, how much voltage is actually leaking out of the ASIC, but how much voltage does the ASIC itself require based on its own ASIC quality. Again, another video. Sometimes things barely make the bin. If they don't have enough Strix, but they need more Strix, again, I'm not saying ASUS specifically does this, it's just an example. They will have a GPU core that barely makes it, barely meets the standard. But what that means to you is unfortunately silicon lottery. You've heard that term before, I'm sure, which means it lost the lottery, whereas it barely made the cut. So as you try to overclock it, it starts becoming unstable because of the quality of the silicon itself. And that might've seemed like a lot of information for people to understand. I'll try and just kind of give you a too long didn't read right now. Um, binning exists because you need your different product stacks. You have binning within binning or extra bins within a bin to create their different models. If we were in a perfect world, a Strix card would always clock higher than a Tough card, which would always clock higher than a, the, their, I can't remember what they call their lower tier cards. But that's not always the case. Because like I said, artificial binning takes place where they have to also fill up that product stack. You never know what the yields are gonna be. However, as the manufacturing process goes on, the yields become better because the manufacturing process becomes more refined. And then you start getting better yields and more product and potentially better overclocking and such. But that's where you start to see faster cards come out that have higher clock speeds and such associated with them. So anyway, there you go. Just wanna give this talking head piece about what binning is. Um, there's a much more deep dive technical discussion that could take place regarding that. But I'm talking to the average consumer right now that isn't too concerned with like FinFET tech and all that sort of stuff. They just wanna know like, why does the Strix cost more than the Tough? Which should I get? If you wanna save money, I never ever personally shopped up here. And I don't mean up here in just like the Strix type of echelon. I mean, I never even personally before having this channel ever had owned an 80 series card of any kind. I always owned like 60 series. I had a 7600 GTKO from EBJ way back in the day. I had an 8800 Ultra, but that was only after my best friend sold it to me, used after the new family came out, when prior to that I was running like an 8800 GTS. Because there's, Probably a whole nother video there. There's, there. We've talked about this before. There is definitely exceeding what you need and then there's what you want. So it's just kind of finding where that intersect is. Anyway, looks like September 20th is the day we're gonna find out all the juicy details finally about 40 series. So my biggest recommendation, buy a new power supply. You'll, you'll see why, don't worry.